The role of the wrist on the modern forehand, to snap or not to snap. Today we're going to get to the bottom of the issue and you should have some more clear answers by the end of this video. Let's begin. The relaxed effortless look of modern forehands makes it look like players are manipulating their wrist at almost every part of the swing. What people don't look at are the more important factors of the forehand, such as the kinetic chain and uncoiling with the body. And they don't realize that the wrist is not an independent part in the swing. Whatever happens with the wrist is actually a byproduct of the bigger muscles going towards the ball and the racket coming along for the ride. Now, it would actually surprise you that the wrist is back on 90% of forehands at a high level before contact, during contact, and after contact as well. So where has this common idea of snapping the wrist come from? Well, let's take a look. A lot of people see the movement of the racket from what we could call the set up, pat the dog, to the uncoiling phase, where the racket seems to make a radical transition, sort of a circular motion towards the ball and into the follow through. Now I'm going to explain how this actually happens so you can understand that using your wrist is actually counterproductive to a good forehand. So at the top of the backswing, the wrist is completely loose and relaxed. There is no tension. Players let the racket free fall just to the height of the ball. Sometimes they start to swing from above the height of the ball and sometimes slightly below. But we're gonna get the idea out of our head that there's a radical low to high motion because that's not how good forehands are hit. Now, from here, our wrist being super loose and relaxed, our arm is also very relaxed as well. And we're gonna take the arm along for the ride. And if you watch, just by pulling the body forwards by going with the hips and the torso first, if the racket is dead weight, and that's how it should feel, this is your mental imagery, the racket's along for the ride, your wrist will naturally catch back into this slot position. So it goes from loose, then you pull the body first, and we're driving from the shoulder and it will automatically be laid back. Now, as we're swinging towards the ball, we're actually rotating from our shoulder. So the entire arm is going as a unit. Okay, the lower arm and the wrist are not independent parts. That's the worst thing that you could possibly do. So we're driving from the shoulder and at contact, pro players are actually trying to impede the movement of the wrist to get the ball under control. There is no snap. And if we slow down the footage towards contact, the wrist is laid back. At contact, the wrist is laid back. And then it's not until well after the ball has left the strings that the wrist relaxes in the follow through of the swing. Now, it is also confusing because there's some variations. For example, on a shot that's hit cross court, we may see a little bit of a different angle in relation to the hitting hand and the lower arm. Okay, it may be less extreme. Now the grips that players use also has a lot to do with the position of the wrist and the lower arm. Players with more extreme grips will appear to be flicking their wrist, but that's only because the hand is well under the handle and players don't actually need to keep the wrist back as much because it's naturally already back in the grip that they're using. So the mechanics of their swing is a little bit different. So it's confusing and you may see them appear to be rolling the wrist more than people with more conservative grips, but 
that's only because their wrist is basically already back in a slot position when they're driving forwards because of their grip. And in order to maneuver over the ball without hitting straight down into the net, they do have to turn over their hand a little bit more than people with, you know, a more Eastern forehand grip. Now, these are some of the things to consider, but just so you should know, 99% of the time, we want to actually keep the wrist back all the way through contact using the steps that I showed you and the release doesn't happen well into the follow through. So hopefully that cleared some things up for you. In any event, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next clinic.